salon in Blue Springs. You are a seasoned hairdresser with tons of contacts, knowledge, and experience in the salon industry. Thank you. What do you see for the future of this industry and where would you like to see it go? Okay. Again, kind of prepared for this one as well. I see, I see the influencer waning a little bit. The influence from the influencer waning a little bit, which I actually like. Mm -hmm. I do like a lot of the influencers. I used to be very anti-influencer. I used to be like, oh, they're stupid. And they're not, they're not um, vetted. They're not a vetted hairdresser. They're not a vetted, you know, uh, educator or any of that kind of stuff. And really, to be honest, that was me just jealous that I can't do their thing. I see that the influencers that are here now and that will stay around have proven themselves as good educators. We went over them earlier. Um, the ones that weren't good are now good, and the ones that were good are better. Fantastic, and they're my friends now. We mentioned Sarai, we mentioned uh, Jake Kahn, we mentioned, we're well, really now, um, Larissa, you know, and, and you know some of the people that, that weren't good educators have become better educators now, and I, I love that, I, I think that's great. So I think that that's one thing that, that the industry is going, is I, I think that we might start seeing, you know, not, a, a decline in the influence, or maybe you know, more of of the individual hairdresser again, you know, behind the chair, being able to influence as opposed to this won't be as, as important. Mm -hmm. um, I also see, and I'm going to stick to this. I kind of see like it's going like the salon industry is going to kind of go kind of the way our economy has gone as well, meaning. Um, Studios are going to be around forever. Studios aren't going around, going away. Sola, uh, Salon Suites, mm -hmm. you know, any of any of those suites aren't going to go away. At first, I hate them. Mm -hmm. um, now I love them. They they fulfill many needs. Uh, they fulfill uh, the person that can't work with other people. Mm -hmm. They fulfill. Uh, they could be like a food truck. Like if you want to, to build a salon in the future, start in a you know, sweet, and then and then move to a brick and mortar in the future, just like you would a food truck. Um, somebody like me, if I if I wasn't lucky enough to work here, I would be working in a in a suite because I'm on the road so much. I really can't I I, I can't have a work in a regular salon, mm -hmm. and this one allows me to be able to go and, and be on the road and then also come back and, and be here. And I, I have the perfect schedule, and I've, I've been able to do what I want to do here. So I'm very lucky with that. So. Sweets aren't going anywhere. No. I also think that there's going to be a resurgence, resurgence, yes, of the commission song. Um, there's very few here. There's very few throughout the country. East Coast is amazing because there's laws against uh, uh, booth rental at all. So there's a lot of of uh, commission song on the East Coast. I have nothing against booth rental, and I, and and what I'm about to say, people might misconstrue that I'm, I'm talking fast, but I'm not. Excuse me. So, I think we're going to see large commission salons in studios, and by those large commission salons, I, I can see big, big, like like uh, eight, ten, fifty, seventy stylists. I can see maybe specialization coming back, where. You're a hair cutter and you only cut hair. You're a colorist and you only color hair. Um, I can see that. I, I can see the discipline coming back, um, the way the Sassoons used to be, the way, I, I don't know how, um, Bijan, mm -hmm. I don't know how they do it, but I, I can see something in that kind of, you know, big. So I, I think that the middle class is gonna get spread kind of like we are. We're gonna have suites and we're gonna have huge salons. I don't think that I think this in the center, which is the four to six chair salon, uh, sometimes booth rent, sometimes commission. I think that they're gonna kind of be squeezed in one or the other direction. Is is kind of my thought. 
That's very interesting. I, I, I don't uh, disagree with that yeah. at all. And what you said about suites, there's a lot of owners. I, I, I call it the owner holding tank because there's former owners, there's future owners. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the ideal place to either go from ownership or start if you want to be an owner. Because if you can manage that, well, might as well give it a shot on, mm -hmm. on the large scale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of owners come and go out of suites. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And I think it's great. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. It's a great option. I think um, the industry is in one of those, I think it's a massive flux in the industry, um, or I say a movement. Mm -hmm. uh, I look at, uh, at fads, trends, and movements. Fads are uh, something that comes and goes rather quickly. You know, for instance, uh, big hair in the in you know the, the mid '90s when I was a, a kid in, in high school, you know, big hair or actually the '80s, you know, mall bangs, you know, that was a fad. A trend would be like a bob where it comes and goes, and in, you know, or even a shag where it comes and goes. Um, and then movements are like they come but they never really leave. So you know, say the roller setting movement or um, the hair cutting movement from the '60s, the retail movement of the '80s and '90s. Um, the color movement of the mid 90s. Mm -hmm. um, I think that right now we're in the education movement. I think that we're in a massive transition. I think that there's still going to be some some growing pains. Um, I think that uh, we're probably going to see some growing pains in that influencer you know bracket. Um, but I think that when it's done, it's going to be super exciting. I think that the whole thing is super exciting, um, and I think that it's it's shaking up right now. And I love it. And I love the, the, the salon industry is also being shut down. It's, it's a weird time, but a cool time. Yeah, yeah. You have your hands in so many different things. What do you do to relax, and how do you spend your time off from hairstyling? <laughs> I bought a motorcycle. I bought a Harley back in June. Um, I bought a Harley. Uh, there's other bikes I could have bought. I could have bought an Indian. I could have bought a Suzuki. I could have bought a Yamaha. Um, but how many... Uh, Yamaha tattoos, do you see? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I really, I really bought a Harley because I wanted to look cooler right. riding it. Yep. Yep. Um, so that's a lot of fun. I, I do that. Um, we're big foodies. I, I, I love going out to eat. We love, we love, you know, finding the cool spots in Kansas City. I love finding the cool spots across the country. Mm -hmm. um, I love the bar scene, uh, the bar culture. Um, I, I love dive bars. I love. Um, speakeasies, I love craft cocktail bars. I'm not a huge drinker anymore. Um, in fact, I, I, I kind of quit drinking back in July, but I still like going to bars. I still love, I love it. it it's, I always tell people that, that I, I only love two types of people. I love hairdressers and bartenders, which is really pretty much the same thing, yep. right? I, yep. love, I love going to that. So that's, so that's what I do a lot on my spare time. Uh, I watch a lot of TV, um, like what, probably way too much TV. I play some video games. I, I'm a big music person. I collect, I collect records. Um, I have probably over, you know, 15, uh, maybe 16,000 records uh, in my collection. Wow, yeah. records, records. Yeah, hmm. the vinyl. Vinyls. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, I love it. Huh. And you have a record player, obviously. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, a record player. You still make them? Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, they, they get really expensive now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's and there's cool. nothing like uh, waking up early on a Sunday morning and, and listening to the perfect record, like the perfect music choice. And what I love about records is um, it keeps you engaged. So like with, with an iPhone, I can turn on Spotify mm -hmm. and I can just play the song that I want and then it'll pick another song for me. Where with a record I put on, you know, Cocktail Twins or whatever I'm listening to that morning. Um, I have to listen for it to stop playing, and then I'll, I, have to, I have to get up and physically flip it over uh, to get the next to get the next. Um, That's so cool. Yeah, and, and I can't that. just listen to the good cuts. I have to listen to the whole thing. I love it. I love it. So your Instagram says uh, King Turd. <laughs> My son uh, was laughing and rolling on the floor when he saw. He said, "Who is King Turd? <laughs> I'm gonna go talk to King Turd tomorrow." <laughs> What does this nickname come from, and what is it like being King Turd? Okay, so it's not necessarily a nickname. It's a nickname I gave myself. So it's like calling yourself, you know, yeah. hey, you should call me Shorty. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's kind of a, a, a bittersweet 
uh, a buddy of mine, Roy J. White, um, rest, in, rest in peace, um, the Hillbilly Barber, um, passed away back in December last year. Um, we were sitting in the basement of his salon um, in Louisville, Kentucky, and we were talking about a singer, uh, Sturgill Simpson, um, who had a song, and he's like, you know, this song reminds me of you, bro. Um, and I listened to it, and it was a song called King Turd, or no, uh, Have the Crown, Have the Crown is what it's called. And the, the, the lyrics are, uh, they call me King Turd up here on Chicken Mountain. Mm -hmm. And if you want it, you can have the crown. Right? <laughs> so, and, and, it, and what it is is, you know, people look to me and think that, oh, you have all this success. Or people think that you have, you know, all this like, you know, magical stuff and whatnot. When in reality, I'm still hustling like everybody else. You know, I'm still, you know, sometimes I get broke. You know, sometimes I, I look on the internet, you know, for, for you know, the next... You know, big thing, and all I can really find is another car and like some Mopar parts, and you know, uh, uh, you know, whatever. And, and you know, maybe I need to go out and you know, come up with the next best song, or I need to come up with like the next best video to be to become insta famous all of a sudden. <laughs> you know, so it's even though I look like I have all that, um, it's me still working. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's the king turn. And actually, what's funny is when I was getting the tattoo. Um, I knew I wanted a crown on a, on a poop emoji. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember my buddy DJ Muldoon um, has a the exact same crown. I'm like, oh, what I should do. And so I, I text him, I'm like, hey man, send me a picture of your, of your crown. And so he sent me a picture of his crown and I put it on this poop emoji. And then I sent him a picture and I was like, look man, we have matching tattoos. Mine is on a piece of, and you are a piece of. Yep. <laughs> So Evolve, mm -hmm. where you're working, a really amazing salon. Thank you. Are you all hiring? Always. Um, one thing that I've always said is, is um, so we hire fast, we fire faster. Uh, meaning, um, we don't really care about your references. We don't really care about your resumes. We don't care about you know the, the kind of career you had in beauty school um, because we're going to retrain you and. Um, a lot of times when you have a resume, that's just your marketing department, you know, your references are just your marketing department where I would rather, we hire based on vibe and, and you know, if you have a good vibe, you're going to come work for us. And if, if we have to let you go, it's, it's not that, that we're being mean to let you go, it's just you're not really a part of the vibe and, and you know, maybe you probably be more successful somewhere else and I, we still love you, it's just, you know, we're going to have to part ways. Um, and I know that I'm not necessarily, like, I've never had any training in HR. You know, so I, I've also had to um, be real with myself that I'm going to make mistakes when I hire people. And I say that because, yes, we are hiring, and, and we, have a, we have a great, a great apprenticeship program. Probably the best apprenticeship program I've ever written, actually. Awesome. Um, and this is probably like the sixth one I've written. Um, where we train every Thursday, every Thursday morning, we, we go over... Uh, you know, something within the industry, some sort of like motivational type thing, and then we get into haircuts and color. You know, we start from the beginning. We love to hire uh, students. We don't really like to hire um, other people's baggage necessarily. And I don't mean to refer to hairdressers as baggage, but you know, I, I don't want to ever poach. Like I'll never poach another salon. Um, that's not cool. Um, if somebody does leave a, a salon and wants to come work with us, if you've worked at another salon across town or even in town, um, I'm going to make it almost mandatory that I call that salon and make sure that you're that they're okay with you leaving, mm -hmm. because I don't want to have uh, a knife in my back in the future, you know. Um, but we like to re we really like to hire beauty school students. Um, I like to take them from the beginning and and. Uh, watch them grow uh, in our culture and I, we've been super successful or super lucky with the two that are with us right now I mean we had a full staff we had people leave I mean just like everybody else you know when it comes to the salon you know we've had massive ebbs and flows from 2020 uh, starting back up after the quarantine to now we've had massive ebbs and flows we were up to I think like I think close to nine staff and we had you know in june was a tough time and we lost most everybody and then we've rebuilt again and and it's okay you know and, and the people that we have right now working for us we're really happy with but uh, you know katie has only really been with us since february march april 
April, May of last year. Wait, no, June, June last year. And she only got on the floor in January and she's super successful making big girl money. Mm -hmm. And and um, I am putting her on stage with me because I am super confident with her. Uh, Erica, who just started with us, um, isn't on the floor yet, but actually she's come exponentially. And, and like her haircutting skills has gone from, you know, good in her school, but you know, it's really hard to learn in school. You know, so she's now able to, um, make decisions based off of clients' facial shapes and 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 whatnot and, and like like her hair position looks good and she looks good blow drying and she's gonna be super successful as well. So yeah we're always hiring. Um, there's never going to be a time when when I say that we're not hiring because I think that at that point that's almost ego and that's you saying, you know, oh I'm too good. It's like when people say I can't accept any more clients. You can always accept more clients. That's exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah. Like if you're full. Yeah, so yeah, no you're not. People yeah, die, that, they move, <laughs> they find someone else. Exactly. Give me a break. Hire, hire an assistant. If you're too busy, hire an assistant. That's exactly right. Grow someone, mentor somebody. Yeah. This is, we have what I would call a lack of mentorship mm -hmm. in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to find places for students to go. And so I'm super thrilled mm -hmm. to find out all about this. What would you describe as your vibe? Um. We uh, have really, we, we definitely have really good customer service, and that's something that, that we talk about customer service every Thursday. And then uh, it is professional, but it's very relaxed. It's a relaxed professional. It's uh, we listen to fun music. You know, we we have fun as a group. Um, you know, you spend more time in a salon than you do with your family. Um, so we really try to make it a family environment but yet still give you your family. Like, I don't want to call it a family because I think that that's kind of weird or a tribe or anything like that. No, man, we're a slum, we're your coworkers. <laughs> but we still do uh, you know, we still do things together as a group. So for instance, we're all going to uh, the Midwest Hair Selling Awards. Um, last, was it, was it summer last year? Or summer this year? Spring this year. Fall, it was fall. <laughs> um, so when? <laughs> we all got together and took a motorcycle riding lessons. Um, I, I want like as a staff, like we, we want to do something that's not hair related, you know, so we can also have bonding that way. And you know, like I want to do concealed carry mm -hmm. um, for all of, with all of us, even though I don't carry gun, I just think it'd be a lot of fun for all of us to go and shoot guns together. Right. Um, so yeah, we we I think we're we're pretty close. We're not a family because again, that's weird. Yeah. Um, we are, we're in the hairdresser family, um, but we are also very accepting and we're very accepting of, of you know, if, if somebody wants to come and hang out and that's something I'm gonna, you know, suggest to people that if they wanna come and hang out and see what we do and like- Shadow. And shadow, even if you're in a salon, mm -hmm. you know, and you're like, hey, you know, can I just come and walk? Yes, yes, you, you're more than welcome to. I have friends in LA that charge, you know, uh, I think it's $700 to shadow them. That's ridiculous. You know, that's, you know, just come and watch me, come and hang out and, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll chat and I'll, I'll tell you my opinions and whatnot. And, um, I completely lost track of what the conversation okay, the was. Vibe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh, vibe. Okay, yeah. So, so yeah, I, I think that's kind of the vibe. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you talking to me today. I've oh, learned so much about you and Evolve and this has just been the highlight of my week. Awesome, awesome. So, and I had a great time. I think that what you're doing is fantastic as well. I, thank you. I, I know we've had a couple of conversations already, and and um, I, I know that you uh, help people, uh, like, like place people in the right salons and all that kind of stuff. I help advise. Yes, mm -hmm. I think that that's fantastic. I, I, I highly recommend that. I will always recommend that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that there is anybody that does that. Um, so, so, you know, good on you uh, for doing that. And I think that it, uh, it's, it's a huge undertaking that you're doing. Um, and if there's anything I can do to help out, I'm, I'm here for you. I will always be here for you. I really appreciate that. And you're right. It is a big bite, oh, yes, yes. a big bite, but yeah. it's, it's fun. And honestly, I can see people all, all over town. I'm like, okay, well, I, I helped her. I helped mm -hmm. her. Oh my gosh. You talk about influence. I mean, it's just oh, yeah. so rewarding. You're more of an influencer now than the influencer. Except I'm not cool. If you teach me how to be cool, I, <laughs> or, you know, pay I can only teach you how to be awesome. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to that. Thank okay. you so much, Ryan.